Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at how to configure the Cisco Firepower Next Generation IPS with the interface mode inline tap. As we always do, I like to point out some main points that I have picked up while I've been looking into different topics that are related to the CCIE content. Um, and now we're going to take a quick look at some of the main points for the inline tap. So the interface mode is originally inherited from Firepower. So the original Firepower itself before um, Cisco purchased that and uh, merged it alongside the uh, ASA code. Um, inline tap doesn't block the traffic. What we're working with here is uh, essentially copies of packets that are sent uh, through the box so we'll, we'll take a look at that afterwards a copy of each packet is sent to the FTD so as I say the packets themselves um, they, it's basically copies which are going to the FTD and the benefits really are when you want to deploy the next generation IPS in line within your environment but before enabling any sort of rule sets or creating any rule sets you have the ability to analyze and tune intrusion events before going live in your environment so rules that are set to drop and generate or drop or generate will generate intrusion events so you'll be able to see those on the FMC Inline tap is configured within the inline set. So as we did in part one of this video series, um, I showed you how to configure inline um, interfaces. So inline tap is done essentially the same way. Uh, we just start to kind of look at the advanced uh, features, which we'll take a look in the lab later on. And as I, as I mentioned already, the benefits are basically uh, the ability to deploy a next generation IPS in line uh, without um, causing any uh, drops uh, within the network on, on traffic that's seen. So essentially you, you're, you're essentially monitoring uh, and seeing what's going through uh, or seeing what's going on in your environment before going live. pretty straightforward to configure the inline tap interface mode similar as I say to configuring inline sets so we start off by configuring the inline set and then we configure the advanced features within the inline set that allows us to configure the inline tap and then last of all we can configure an intrusion policy so what we'll do in this lab is we'll configure uh, an intrusion policy so that we can see uh, the logs on the FMC and kind of what happens when we're operating in inline tap mode or interface mode. Demonstration we're using the same topology that we've used in part one and some of the previous videos. So we've got router two, router three, and we've got a transparent firepower next generation IPS. Um, running in between those two devices. Uh, we'll configure gig 0, 0 and gig 0, 1 as inline sets and then we've got essentially two different sites if you like. Uh, VPC 4 is on one site so that's got the 10.0 slash 24 subnet and then we've got VPC 5 which has got the 20.0 slash 24 subnet. So what we'll do is we'll get into the lab now. So just give me a second while we get that open. And there we go. So we're logged into the FMC. And as I said, we've got gig 00 and gig 01. And we're going to use those for the inline set. So what we need to do is we go to inline sets. So devices, device management, and then inline sets. OK, 
can see that we've got one already there configured so we've got the outside to inside so that'll be from part one we will configure the inline set and what we'll do is we'll click on the advanced tab and we're interested in configuring inline tap so to do that we need to on the advanced tab we need to select tap mode and we'll leave the rest uh, as is so we'll go ahead and press ok on that and you get a warning that says adding interface to the inline set will change interface mode and any existing security zone mappings will be removed so it's pretty similar to what we've seen before so we just go ahead and press yes and then we'll go ahead and save that so this our inline set with tap configured or inline tap now now just before I deploy the changes to the device we'll just click on access control and as I said in um, inline tap we, we don't drop um, we, we don't drop packets we're just interested in seeing what sort of events are flagged uh, in, in an environment so I'm just going to with this rule here I'm just going to disable that rule and then I'm going to change the default rule to um, what will we change it to? We'll do connectivity over security, and then what we'll do is we'll add, I'll create a separate rule so that we can test and so that we can see um, the intrusion events. So I'll just save that, and we'll probably need to. I might actually create a separate intrusion policy. Don't think we've got one created yet. Yep, so there's no policy there created at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll create a separate intrusion policy um, and change that on the access control so that we can we can work with a separate intrusion policy. So to do that, what I'll do is I'll create a rule. So I'll go to objects intrusion rules and what we'll do is we'll create a rule at the top right end there corner and then what we'll do is we'll let's give it a message uh, see if uh, suspicious uh, ICMP because we'll test with ICMP um, and we'll leave the classifications client was using a unusual port um, I see anything else we could use let's do potentially bad traffic actually so what we'll do is we'll change the action in fact we'll keep the action as alert Protocol will keep as ICMP and we'll leave it as directional. Source IP will specify VPC4 and source port will be 8, ICMP code, destination 0 and destination IP is 192.68.10 And we'll change detection option to ICMP sequence. And what we'll do is we'll save that as new. I remember that name, suspicious ICMP. In fact, I'll copy that quickly. Okay, so we can see now that that's successfully been created. So what we'll do now is we'll just go to policies, access control and intrusion. And we'll create a new policy. So this policy will just call it a test policy or in fact, let's call it tap policy.
You can drop one in line, but it's not going to do that in line tap. So what we'll do is our base policy will leave as balanced. And we'll go ahead and create and edit the policy. And what we need to do is we need to add that new rule that we've just created into that intrusion policy before assigning it to the access control policy. Okay, so once that's loaded, what we need to do is we need to add the rule. Um, so we'll go to manage rules. And let me see if I can filter on this. So we can see our rule that we created there, suspicious ICMP. So get rid of that. So we'll change the so at the minute that one is disabled as you can see there. So how you tell is basically the arrow sign. Uh, if you hover over that it'll tell you it's disabled or it's normal normally slightly grayed out. So what we'll do with that is we'll um click generate events once we've selected that so that's successfully set the rule state for one rule so again as you can see now the text is now bold and we also have a solid green um, arrow so we'll just go off that so now that we've got that one on let's go back Let's commit those changes. You don't have to put a description. You can do if you want. If it's in a live environment, I guess putting a description for change management purposes would be a good idea. Okay, so that intrusion policy has been configured. So we'll just go back to policies and access control. We'll click on our configure default access control policy. And for our default action, we've got login on. Logs are going to the event viewer. And we're going to assign our configured policy. So that's fine. So we've got our assigned configured policy now. So we'll save that and then what we'll do is we will get up the VPCs so we can see these here. So if I try ping 192.168.20.10 we can see that that's successful. So that's VPC5 and vice versa if I ping 192.168.20.10 10.10 which is VPC4 again we can see that that's also successful the reason I've just done that is because we want to now go to analysis and we want to go to intrusions and events and nothing should be shown under intrusion events as of yet Okay, so now we can see that there's no record. So what we'll do now is we will deploy those changes that we've configured. And then we will do the ping test again, which should hopefully show that we have uh, intrusion events based on the rule that we created. So that policy is just being deployed now. So we'll wait until that policy has been deployed successfully. So that policy has now been deployed successfully. So what we'll do now is we will run the same ping test and we'll see if we can get some generated intrusion events. So let's just run that test there. So we'll ping on VPC4 
to VPC5 like that and what we'll do is we'll just reload this screen to see if we can get the events there we go so now we can see that we've got an intrusion event which has been shown we can see that the classification is potentially bad traffic that's what we specified when we were configuring the new rule we can see that the priority is medium and we can see suspicious ICMP so if we click on this we get more information so we get the time impact we get the source IP destination IP we get the source ICMP type as well as the destination and we get the the message as well that we we configured so you can get more information on that um, yeah there's a few more there's a few more other things but I think the main point that I wanted to to try and demonstrate today is that once the inline tap is configured um, it's for seeing what's going on in your network without blocking anything so it gives you the ability to monitor the sort of things that are going on in your network and you can kind of tune and refine intrusion policies before uh, essentially going live in in your environment or where that next generation ips has been deployed so hopefully that's been a good demonstration there for you as I always do, I leave you with a few useful links where you can find more information about uh, the what we've just covered today, as well as uh, more information on the CCIE security topics themselves. Again, I hope you found this video useful. That was essentially covering how to configure inline tap on the Cisco Firepower Next Generation IPS and also how we can uh, test with some uh, generated um, traffic to, to match some of the rules. In a real life scenario or in a real life environment you could probably have uh, specific rules enabled already uh, without having to create new rules and then see what sort of matches you get on the traffic in your environment. I will include the links in my video description. Please like if you've got any questions, comment, and if you want to stay up to date with the latest CCIE security uh, videos that I release, uh, you can do so by subscribing and also hitting the notifications button, um, and that will enable you to stay up to date with um, the videos that I release as they are released straight away. Until next time, thanks for watching guys, goodbye.